In this video, we're going to talk about some more details on metabolism and enzymes. We're going to talk about metabolic pathways and how they can be chains or cycles. And then we're going to talk about what exactly enzymes do. So hopefully quite a quick video. Um, so the first thing is what a metabolic pathway is. So we said the metabolism was the sum of all the enzyme catalyzed reactions in a cell, right? That's kind of the SL component of it. And you have to be able to understand that metabolism is, is typically a series of reactions, okay? So it's where one thing converts into another, which converts into another. And there's two types of metabolic pathways largely. Either you can have a chain, so where something like an A is converted into B, by an enzyme, and typically the notation for an enzyme is that it's some derivative of the word, the substrate, and then you just put A's at together, right? Uh, you put A's at the end. So for example, if you have lactose, then the enzyme's called lactase. So A is converted by AA's into B, and then B is converted to by BA's into C, right? So it's just kind of like a model. And so this is called a chain because one thing links to the next, which links to the next, but then the final product is different from the original substrate. So that's one type of metabolic pathway. And then another type of metabolic pathway is a cycle. So this is what we see in cell respiration. So things like the Krebs cycle or the Calvin cycle in photosynthesis, right? And um, what a cycle is, it's just, well, you know what a cycle is, right? It's where you have one thing which converts into another, which converts into another, which converts into another, but eventually you get back to your original product, right? So that the Calvin cycle and the Krebs cycle are examples of this, which is why the IB wants to introduce this idea generally first. So you have enzymes, uh, sorry, you have cycles or you can have chains. And uh, these chains or cycles are catalyzed by enzymes. So we're just going to have a, a little resume of uh, what enzymes exactly do. So enzymes lower the activation energy of the chemicals reactions they catalyze. So let's break that statement down. So when you catalyze something, what you're doing is that you're speeding it up. Okay, you're speeding up a reaction. So when A converts into B using BAAs, right, it doesn't mean that these this reaction would never have happened otherwise. It's just that AA speeds up the, how, how quickly A can turn into B. Okay, And the, it, they do this by lowering the activation energy. So we're just going to have a look at what exactly activation energy is. Imagine you had two beakers, okay, and one of them was a little bit higher than the other one. And then in these beakers, you had a series of bouncing balls on the left-hand side. Okay, and uh, let's imagine that the goal of these bouncing balls was to get over this barrier and land in the other beaker because the other beaker is lower to the ground. It is basically more stable to be in this beaker. Well, then only the bouncing balls that have enough energy to jump all the way over the wall can then land in this next beaker, right? Which means that that's kind of what's limiting how money, how quickly these uh, and these. Um, bouncing balls can get over the wall, right? The height of the wall. So what an enzyme does is that it effectively just lowers that wall, right? So I'm just going to take a little marker here and then we're going to make it white. So imagine you could reduce the size of this wall, right? Well, then what's going to happen? Well, these bouncing balls, right? They're not going to get more energy all of a sudden. It's just that now you don't need to have as much energy in order to reach this new ideal beaker. You, even the small uh, bouncy balls with a lot less energy can get all the way over. Now, this is basically what enzymes do for a chemical reaction. The height of the wall is the, is the minimum energy that these bouncing balls have to have to get into the new beaker. And its equivalent is basically the activation energy, right? So when a substrate needs to convert into its product, it needs to have a particular amount of, act of energy, what we call activation energy, and enzymes lower that um, that requirement, okay? So they do that by providing basically an alternative chemical pathway. And so that means that the substrate turns into a product more easily and therefore more quickly. So by lowering the activation energy. So in this video, what we talked about is that metabolic pathways are a series of reactions that occur after each other, right? And that these can be both chains or cycles. And we talked about how enzymes speed up chemical reactions by lowering activation energy. So I hope that made sense.